okay? Uh, they have the same spirit. They have the same vision. Not the identical vision, but the same vision of the Lord as they are listening carefully for whatever he is releasing through them, especially regarding missions. Okay? We've always been highly involved with missions years and years ago. But when the Lord sent me in over TXAPN, the very first thing he said to me after Dutch had commissioned me as an apostle, Dutch said, I'm giving you my mantle, mantle that I have for the nation. And then the Lord said, I'm canceling all your trips out of, out of the nation. Now he said, you, I, could, I could ask if I could go. And he's let me go three times, four times, twice to Guatemala. Thank goodness for a wedding. And Israel and then Mexico along with uh, Mike and Cindy Jacob several years ago. So, so that has been our heartbeat. We used to have 40, 30, I know at least flags of the nations that we had touched in one way or another over the years. And these are ones that we still continue to pray with. So it's really my pleasure and my joy. Come on, John. I'm going to let you come up and you can introduce your team. But welcome, John Bunn. I'm gonna like right away bring everybody up. So Timberly, Nick, and Becca, and Hannah, you can come on up. And um, I, we we are so grateful for those of you that don't know at the hub. Um, one of the things I think that makes us, I guess, unique is a good word, maybe peculiar. I don't know. Um, peculiar fits. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, peculiar fits. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is is that uh, our leadership team is completely horizontal? Um, I'm I am uh, by default the planter, but I planted it on purpose with the uh, directive from the Holy Spirit to be one of five. So we have a fivefold leadership team, and Timberly has been there since day one. Um, and we currently have another who you, some of you may have met, Abraham Shaker. Uh, he and his wife, Sheila, uh, they're currently <coughs> over in India right now ahead of uh, what we're about to do in Malaysia, which we'll tell you about in a minute. And then uh, we have Nick down there. Nick Jones is uh, a longtime associate of Timberly. She He was in uh, one of her uh, marketplace major classes uh, at CFNI and uh, just so happens to also be uh, married to my oldest daughter, uh, Rebecca. And then that is her second son there, their second son. Uh, and uh, then my daughter, Hannah. And Sarah is not here, but is going with us uh, in August. And my wife also is going with us in August. So. Um, basically what I want to do is, is kind of let Timberly went ahead um, on the first trip that we went on uh, that I had to cancel for the sudden passing of my brother-in-law. Um, but I want her to kind of share her adventures. They went all through India. And then when we went after them, uh, we went to India, Malaysia, and Singapore. And I've got some um, some pictures that we can share, but each one of us, we're just gonna kind of share with you. You were so very generous to help support us to go. And uh, we saw a lot of incredible moves of the Lord and releases of the Lord. And all of that will kind of, you know, lead us into what God's calling us again to do this August. So I'll let Tim really take it. Okay, so again, thank you so much. I wanted to just mention something regarding that passage in Ezekiel 37. The dry bones passage, we know that very um, well. Thank you for the beautiful rendition from Tim's book. That I had not read that. That's lovely. But it goes on, actually, and it, it not only does Isaiah, I mean, the prophet, prophesy Ezekiel, thank you, the right prophet. <laughs> not only does Ezekiel prophesy over the dry bones, when they are raised up into a great army, the Lord tells him to prophesy over the army. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting yeah. is God does not tell him to prophesy what God will do with them. He prophesies, he has, 
uh, uh, Ezekiel prophesy over them who they are yes. That's right. and what their destiny is. <laughs> and so I wanted to say that before I say this, because when we went to India, we did not know what we were going to do there. Okay, we knew what we were, that, you know, that God had called us to go, but not necessarily what we would be doing there, which makes for a very interesting trip. <laughs> now, Abraham, being the apostle that he is, and being from India and has established a huge work over there, they have over 15,000 churches and counting that they've established from larger ones, three to 5,000 members to tiny house churches all over that what um, God had us do was go and visit those different places, in, in my case, five cities. And we ministered to the people. We taught about the fivefold there. I taught on the prophetic. What does that look like, a fivefold <laughs> prophet, in alignment with other, you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, and in alignment with the other gifts. But then he had us minister to the people. That was a highlight of my life. It's like we didn't speak the same language. It didn't make any difference at all. I was astonished. The Holy Spirit moved in the flow of the gifts of the Spirit, and we saw deliverance, and we saw breakthrough. And like one woman, I finally had an interpreter come over because when I laid hands on her, she grabbed hold of me. She began to weep and weep and weep and weep. And then someone told me that her husband had just died. Well, when you're a widow in India, in that Hindu culture around you, you are a cast off. You're a castaway. And she was terrified. But when she got up off the floor after we ministered to her, she was glowing. She had life. She had hope. And see, this is what God gives us. He gives us hope and life. Amen? So many things have sprung from that time there. But it was just astonishing to go to each place and just watch God move. And I'll let them tell more about the widows. So. Yeah, so we were in Kolkata, and we got to spend, we were there for three days, mm -hmm. right? And we got to uh, minister to two different groups of widows. Mm -hmm. And like Kimberly was saying, they become less than nothing. Their children aren't allowed to help them. They can only beg on the streets or resort to other means to sustain any children they have left who are younger. Mm -hmm. And it is just so heartbreaking to come to a place to see these people who just have no hope whatsoever for anything better in their life. And to get to minister to these women and to show them their value, to show them how the Lord sees them, that even though their society, the people around them see them as like dirt, nothing, that God has still a destiny for them and he has a great heart and a love yeah. for them. And I know that there is a lot of work that's being done with the widows to give them ways to uh, sustain themselves outside of begging, outside of mm. like resorting to prostitution, to other things, um, and working actively in that to give them homes, to give them uh, businesses and things that they have passions for, not just in what would be easiest to sustain some kind of income, but things that they have desires for. And while we were preaching to them, while we were speaking to them, me personally just felt to um, tell them just how blessed they are in the midst of their grief, in the midst of being poor in spirit, that the blessings, the beatitudes are for them while they are, while they are poor in spirit, while they are grieving, that the blessing of the Lord is upon them. And Nick also got to speak with them as well. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, one of the things that that we take very seriously is the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And the way that we see the Great Commission and the way that we teach the Great Commission, because the whole purpose of our fivefold leadership team is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, primarily in the marketplace, primarily outside of the four walls. Yeah, it's great that... Like tribunals, we come up and we make decrees and, and we read scripture and we prophesy, and that's fantastic. But it's even better when you become a Joseph and a Daniel and an Esther out in the marketplace where you can solve worldly problems with godly solutions that will build you then a platform to then share the gospel. When Joseph shared uh, the, the interpretation of the dream and he was elevated 
to a position of second in, in the kingdom. And he fixed the famine and he made Egypt prosperous during that time. It was at the end of all of the fixing and the solutions and the, and the prosperity that Pharaoh turns to him and says, who is your father? And in the natural, obviously, he's, he's talking about his literal father. But, but when they come and they, and they see your solutions and, and God's answers coming through you and they look at you and they say, how did you come up with this? This is brilliant. This is, this is exactly what we need. So we take very seriously the Great Commission in that we have, think of it as two sides of the same coin. You, you don't just have Matthew's version of it and his interpretation of what Jesus said and Mark's version of it and his interpretation of what Jesus said. Jesus actually said both. Heads, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And tails, go into all the world and disciple nations. So we see it as the great commission coin <laughs> that has two elements to it. Reaching the one and discipling nations and it's the discipling nations part that we are most excited about because the church globally um, Very much unlike America, but globally has incredible challenges that we have yet to see here and What fascinates us in our local work is that with all the liberty and all the freedom and all the l lack of persecution we kind of sit on our blessed assurance and hope somebody will fix it. When we could, uh, one of the most important things that, that I know for myself that I discovered in talking with the leaders is they're like, oh Lord, if we had the ability to do and say and preach and minister and release the kingdom with the liberties that you have in America, how can America be so upside down? Their countries are thriving when they're facing the death penalty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're, the, the work of the gospel is exploding. 15,000 churches, if you ask Abraham, that's insane to me. Yeah. That's 15,000 leaders. Yeah. And he's like, that is a drop in the bucket. That's right. India, wow. con, India has, as its population, one quarter of the world's <laughs> population. Wow. And then China. Together they have half of the world's population. And they're, they're nonstop. I, I've never met, and, and you'll see, you know, just pictures that are scrolling through. Um, you'll, you'll see uh, a, a short little Indian man. That would be Abraham. Um, this is a guy who, oh, there he is. That's Abraham. Abraham is 70. Four. And we had a four hour layover in <coughs> Malaysia, I think, Penang. Yeah. Or Kuala Lumpur. We had a four hour layover. And he's taking meetings in the airport at one in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm over there. I'm asleep. I'm out. I, I like, I'm, I'm just, I'm leaned up against the wall. And it, but he, there is not one wasted opportunity with him. Wow. Wow. And so as, as he sits, uh, you know, and in a way that the Lord has, has blessed us to be able to have him uh, to be a part of our, of our fivefold team, he truly is beyond apostolic. I know a lot of people who carry an apostolic anointing and they carry an apostolic mantle and they do very significant apostolic things. I've never walked with a modern day Paul until I met Abraham. And, and the way that he cares and nurtures the churches and, and he is, if he's not there in person, he's there in Zoom, he's up at all hours of the night in America to make it convenient for the leaders in India. And he's invited us into this. And by default, those covering in prayer and supporting financially has invited you into this. And we had an opportunity to see leaders 
begin to recognize that for the most part, they spend all their effort and energy because they have been trained largely in part by a Western model that says the senior pastor has to be 100% responsible for everything. But in reality, Jesus gave the apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers so that you only have to really be 20% responsible and 100% effective. Rather than 100% responsible and 20% effective. And we see this in church after church after church after church. And so one of the big things that we were able to release is just a new paradigm of how to empower people around this, the leader to be able to pick up the things that Jesus designed to be put on display. One of the key principles of that teaching that I have is that, you know, back in 2000, the Holy Spirit said, son, do you know why? Because I was talking to him and I, I've been in ministry since 1987 and now it's 2000. And I'm like, God, if this is what it is, I'm selling shoes. I'm out. Like, this is nuts. And he said, he said, do you know <laughs> what haven't you done? <laughs> Uh, he said, uh, "He said, you know why 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people? And I was like, well, Lord, you know. And he said, because only 20% of me shows up in the pulpit every week. But that 20% is so energizing. And, and that, that uh, I'll use it, not a great word, but that iconic figure of me, that image, that representation of me is so energizing. Let's say it's a senior shepherd. And, and that's so energizing that all the shepherds are like, I can, I can connect to that. And I'll do 80% of whatever he asked me to or she asked me to do. And now he said, what if all five of me was put on display? What if all five parts of me? Because he broke himself into those five uh, portions and gifts. And he said, what if all five was put on display? And all the people that connect with those also are willing to be energized at that level. He said, it's not 100%, it's 400%. Because each 20 is willing to do 80. And so we're, we're trying to help communicate those kinds of paradigm shifts and, and uh, opportunities for 250 pastors, and I'll let Nick talk about this in a minute, um, for 250 pastors who are not just 250 random leaders. These these are pretty much handpicked by Abraham to be regional leaders, some with a few churches, some with many, many, many churches. But the goal is, is to have this kind of um, ministry happen and, and teaching happen so that they will take this back and who knows what that harvest will be. And who cares if they ever hear about us or hear about... The hub or hear about the fivefold. I, there's there's no labels. No one is there as apostle so and so or prophet so and so. It's just Abraham, John, Timberly, Nick, like everybody that's coming. We're, we're trying to say it's time. It's time to pick up the function but lay down the title. It's time to not be called one without doing what that title represents. And so uh, what we were also able to do in there was, was see incredible miracles. I just want to share really quick um, one in particular and, and a, a very powerful lesson that the Lord told me. Um, we were in, I don't remember where, uh, the blind lady. We were in Kolkata. Yeah, okay. Uh, we were in Kolkata and this woman came up and she had been completely blind in one eye and had lost... Uh, about 80, 85% in her other eye. And this eye was like totally just white. Mm. And she couldn't see out of it at all, never had been able to see out of it. And we prayed, and then we prayed some more, and then we prayed some more, and then we prayed some more, and then we prayed some more. And then this eye totally cleared up, this one eye. Yay. And then we prayed some more, and then we prayed some more. And then we prayed some more because we had committed as a team that we were not going to let go until God manifested, no matter how long it took. 
If God put somebody in front of us and they had a need, we were praying through. We weren't just going to pray five or six times and say, well, okay, just go home and the Lord will finish the work. You know, he does that and that's fine. And sometimes you have to do that. But we committed on this trip. There's a reason why we're there and they're there and we're going to see this through to breakthrough. And I was getting a little frustrated with the Lord as to how long it was going to take because now we're almost 15, 20 minutes into Praying for this person, and which is not at all the American model. It's okay, okay, you know, whatever. But we're praying for breakthrough, and all of a sudden I begin to see like this little swirling happening in the eye that's totally white. And and I gotta tell you, a lot of people would have stopped there. Yeah. And they'd be like, okay, God's doing something. This is great. But when you push against a mountain, and you push against a mountain, and you push against a mountain, and it does not budge. And then you push one more time, and it just goes, pfft. that's the time to rejoice, because the mountain just blinked. You're in a staring contest with the enemy, and they just blinked. And it doesn't matter if it takes a week, a month, a year, or two seconds. That thing just moved. And so it's on. Like, I'm just like, yeah, it's on. There's a swirl going. This thing's going to, and, and within about another two to three minutes, her eye began to completely clear up. And I, because she'd never seen a, a clock, you know, out of that eye. So I'm not like, well, tell me, you know, through an interpreter, tell me what time is it on that clock back there. I just sent a guy to the back of the room and I said, do stuff. And I told her to do whatever she saw him doing. And she mirrored everything he did. And God totally healed her. Wow. Completely. But I was frustrated. Because it took almost 40 minutes. 40, yeah, 40, 45 minutes. And I'm like, Lord. If you cast out demons with your finger, what is that? What is the holdup? Where was the bottleneck? And he said, do you want to know? And I'm like, well, I asked, but probably not. <laughs> I said, what's the holdup? And he said, son, you're the holdup. And I went, whoa, we had fasted. We had prayed. We had seen multiple other miracles. What do you mean I'm the holdup? And he said, you're laying hands on someone expecting me to flow through you. You're my ambassador. Lay my hands on them. Speak my words to them. Don't ask me to flow through you. Stand there as me. And I shared that with the team. And, and Nick and Becca were like, that's exactly what God told us to pray. Lord, your hands. Lord, your words. Lord, your healing. Your, it's, and, and it just was happening in the moment. And I was just completely shifted in my perspective of another layer of revelation of what it is to be an ambassador. What it is to be a joint heir. Yeah. What it is to be commissioned yeah. for his mission yeah. to the nations. Yeah. To release those who are captive. Yeah. To take that Isaiah anointing as if it were my own. Oh, wow. Wow. And then breakthroughs started coming left and right. Wow. I mean, wow. every, every time we, we prayed for hundreds of people over the next several days. And we just, I mean, breakthrough was coming all across. Every, everywhere we went, we were able to energize in um, Chennai. Uh, we were able, was it Chennai? Was that our last city? Yeah, in India. Uh, in Chennai, we were able to mobilize an entire group of teenagers who were just sitting there soaking it all up. And I was like, hey, this isn't for me to release. This is for you to release. And they went into the congregation and they started laying hands and people started getting healed and they were like ecstatic. They were all giddy, like, oh, this works. This is really cool. And so anyways, anyways, uh, there's one picture that you'll see in the rotation of a sun in a, in a very cloudy day. Looks like a moon. It's the sun. When we were in Mumbai, the yeah. or Delhi, sorry, Delhi, Delhi, Delhi. When we were in Delhi, the um, the pollution was so thick oh, wow. 
that on a bright, sunny, cloudless sky, that's what it looked like. And uh, that's Malaysia, and that's the bridge going into Penang where we're going back in uh, August. And yep, there it is. That's the sun full on, like nothing but pollution obstructing it. And that's about how bright it was outside. Um, but uh, one of the things that that bridge of, of going over to Malaysia, what we discovered and when we go back, um, one of the things that, that we're realizing is all of these Hindu temples that are being erected all over the place and every bridge and every governmental project because the nation is Hindu and the poverty that we saw was beyond, beyond anything that you could even remotely comprehend here in America. And take the worst part that you've ever seen in your entire life and multiply it by about 100. It, it, the whole family's living on top of a dump with a, with a tarp as their cover. That's it. And scrounging through the dump for food. And, and I mean, just like the, the need is so great, there's, there's almost, it's almost overwhelming. Which is why we, it's important to partner with local ministries who are, who are dealing with those things and taking care of them. Because, I mean, five-year-olds walking out into traffic to beg. And, and I'm freaking out in the car neighbor. He's like, no, this is, they do this all the time. Like, the, people are watching them, and you're looking at them, and you're just, I'm like, please, someone, can I go grab that kid and adopt it and take it home? Because it's, you know, filthy and in diapers and running out into the street to beg for money in rush hour traffic, which is always rush hour traffic in India. But um, so, so this, this whole thing that we were coming up against, Nick made a, a comment about this is what a nation looks like when their hearts are yielded to pagan rulers and to powers and principalities over the region. Um, I brought up the bridges because there is no government project that is set up and no temple that is set up without human sacrifices buried in the pylons that hold up the bridge. And blood sacrifice and multiple uh, children sacrifice in the foundation of the temples that they erect. And it is like Old Testament stuff. And I'm, I'm just looking at this, I'm like, oh, this, this is the same spirits we're fighting in America. We just do it in a doctor's office. We do it in a sterile environment. But it's the exact same thing. And, and so, you know, entering into these places, the remnant that is still here in America is the only thing holding back this. And we have to take full advantage of our liberties and our freedoms while we still have them to still be the beacon to the nations, to still fulfill the 1607 prophecy of being a light to every nation. Amen. We still have the opportunity and not to get too caught up. Yes, elections are important. Yes, prayer for the right candidate and God's man to be put in is important. Yes, it's important for us to make decrees but it's also important for us to make disciples. Yes. Yes. Amen. Okay, so moving to Penang, I want to tell you the prophetic word and the prophetic thing that happened, and then I'm going to give it to Nick. So Abraham was flying into Penang from somewhere in the world, and as he flew in, he saw a bank with a key on the top of it, a great big giant key, and so he thought it was Key Bank. You may know Key Bank International. Didn't think a thing of it. Then when he got where he was going to, uh, he had mentioned it to a gentleman that, that was leading the meetings and said, there's no key bank. And then he prophesied and he said, but Penang is the key to um, Malaysia and Malaysia is the key to Asia. And Abraham knew that we needed to go there and we need to gather the Asian nations. So I believe currently we have about 21 nations represented. Is that right? Yeah, so we have a, a many Asian nations that are coming. It isn't just Malaysians that we're going to. But I wanted you to know why we were going. That was the word given. So, I'm the storyteller now. <laughs> so it's a little, you know, everything with the Lord is a story. So we're going to kind of have to do one of these numbers. <laughs> and you go back here and you come back. All right, so... All right, 2023 is when this happened. 
you were him, the Lord told him to go to a conference in Malaysia, had never been there before. He's on his way to the conference, sees a vision of this key. Obviously, it wasn't actually there. There's no key bank. He sees an open vision of the keys like, God, what is that? Gets the word that Penang is a key to missions throughout all Malaysia. Malay Malaysia will be a key to missions throughout all of Asia. Oh, that's the key. So when we take our trip, this is January 2024 now, um, we go back to Malaysia. Abraham had never really gone to Malaysia outside of that one trip. We just show up. There's a few connections. And we have a powerful time. Um, there's a picture where we preach in this very small church. It's about the size of this room. This was, and it's like 130 degrees in there. It's super hot, no AC. And, <laughs> and we were pouring sweat, powerful time. And um, so, but we're there to build relationships and we meet a wonderful woman named Rita. Rita's been a huge help planning this conference. So uh, as John mentioned, when uh, the Lord brought us through uh, India, Malaysia, and Singapore, um, taught on the fivefold, taught about you know what we would call biblical church governance, healthy church leadership, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Saw dozens of, like, the Lord touched dozens of people, filled them with the Spirit for the first time. Afterwards, meeting with all these leaders, they all had the same response, which was, this is exactly what we've been praying for. Would you please come back and help us with this? And so coming back to America, we were in prayer, and uh, Abraham's heart was to have a central gathering in India for these leaders in the network and in any other nations that wanted to come to get trained and equipped, encounter the Lord, have world-class people, a real uh, international pastors gathering. Um, India is very dangerous for to have that caliber of leaders, that many people in one area. So we started praying, what else should we do? Well, what was the word? Malaysia will be key in all the nations of Asia. So let's do it in Malaysia. And we looked at KL, we looked, which is their capital city, so they're Washington, D.C., and all these other places. And what was the word? Penang. So let's do it in Penang. And so we got our faith together as a team. We were originally looking at 150 leaders, 100 from India, 50 from other nations of the world. Um, and we had this church. I don't know how many of this seats, but um, you know, it would seat like 225. So we got our faith, we needed a budget, and we just started praying and asking God. We made a little flyer, put it out there, and it has exploded. We're at 275 people right now from close to 22 to 25 nations. We have leaders coming from Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Indonesia. We have 25 key leaders coming from Malaysia. We have five, six leaders coming from Singapore, from Israel. Um, God, in and that, that is what it's like to walk by faith. Like, we had never done anything like this. And the word was, Malaysia will be a key to missions throughout all of Asia. Okay, Jesus, you tell us to do an opening, that's where we're gonna do it. We just put it out there. Like, we made a flyer and just put it out, and it went everywhere. We have a guy coming from Japan. I mean, it just went And Asia is showing up. And so the deal is, is as the church is being equipped, there is a need, and this is not our observation, this is their response. We need to know what it's like to transform nations. What does that look like? Will you help us disciple nations? What is it like for the leaves of the tree of life that is good for every month of the year, every season that brings forth the healing of the nations that's planted by the river of life that comes out of the throne of God. Like there is a living reality that these leaves are being produced in Asia. Now Asia, my wife and I were stepping out to do missions in Asia right now and our hearts are burning for this one thing. 
to see the healing of the nations in Asia. And you could probably ask anyone if they're called a Latin America, they're gonna be like, Latin America's gonna be the center of the universe. <laughs> I'm telling you, Asia is going to be the epicenter of the world. From Israel to China, you got India, you have all the stands, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, everything going on in the world is focused on one place right now, and that's Asia. And so I was reading a, a, a missions document last year in 20, well, it was late 23, early 24, but from what they can tell is the underground church in China, their population has surpassed the CCP. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Guys, like, just like, and let me say, like, So, what is going on in Asia? And you see God moving at an astronomical rate. We have, we worked with an organization that was part of the underground church in Iraq and Iran. They're seeing close to 40 to 70,000 people a week get saved. God is moving in Asia, in these countries that have been ruled by demonic principalities. That is not his will for the nations. And so we see the gospel going forth. And like we read in Isaiah 2, it says the nations would come to the great mountain of the Lord to learn of his ways and the people would rejoice. And so we're seeing the people encountering God and gospel moving throughout the nation and the nations are going to start rejoicing. And we have a promise in Psalm 2, that the nations are his inheritance. And it goes past, like we're talking about the widows, it goes farther than people just getting saved. The nation needs healing because these widows are believers and their souls are secure, but they can't work because the society says, because they've submitted themselves to this demonic thing. If you are a widow, you are less than untouchable. And the nation needs healing. And so we have to raise our time horizon. We have to get in faith that says, God, you are going to sweep the nation with salvation. But you are going to reform the nation itself. And so our hearts are alive. And this is what they're saying. Will you come please impart to us? Will you come, please pray with us? We need this anointing for our nation. And just like the Nazi regime fell and there was a vacuum left and we get the Soviet Union, people thought this is life. And there came a day when the Berlin Wall fell and the church needed to respond and flood the nations throughout Europe and bring the gospel. We, and this is my prophetic message, we are going to see the same thing happen in China. And the communistic regime in China is going to come to an end. And the Great Wall of China will fall. And the church is going to have to respond to the vacuum. And if we can sow our lives in prayer and where we go and what we do and what we do with our finances and we raise our time horizon. Who knows in the next few generations, China will be a Christian nation. India will be a Christian nation. Afghanistan will be a Christian nation. Because the nations are promised to come to the great mountain of the Lord. This is our inheritance. And there was a stone cut without human hands that filled up the earth. And we are burning to see that in Asia. And so I'm going to hand it back, but this is normally when we ask for money in prayer. So. <laughs> there are... Um, at least three prophetic pictures that the Lord has confirmed for me today as you all were talking, especially Nick. First off, I don't know how many years ago it was. I want to say probably 25 years ago, I was standing and kneeling at this railing on this side of the altar. And I looked up and I saw the trunk of a massive tree. And I looked up and it was just covered with these leaves. And I said, Lord, what is this? It's the leaves of healing. 
And I knew that that was a promise that healing was going to be released as a ministry of this house. But I also knew because we were going to nations at that time that he was going to, even though I'm not going to nations, that doesn't mean we don't support going to nations. You just, you have to follow. We were talking about that earlier. You got to go where the Lord tells you to go and don't go right or left. You go where he tells you to go and be obedient to that. So I wanted to remind you that that's the heartbeat of what I know this congregation is all about is to support y'all. So y'all need to get ready. And we're going to do this over the next several weeks. But we're going to sow into this. Amen. Okay, we're going to sow into it. Because this is extremely important yeah. for the carrying out of the nations and the, the mandate of discipleship. Secondly, I've got another one at the house, so I'm not going to give up my only one. <laughs> but you need to carry this with you. Because it's a piece of the Berlin Wall. Mm. And you hold on to that and say, as it happened in Berlin, it will happen in China. Come on. It will happen in China. It's going to happen. The other thing here, as you know, I, I think all of you know this, my name means Keeper of the Keys, so I, I'm a key guy. But... Um, one of our friends who's on the council, uh, Peggy Connect, she worked for Wycliffe and she had been in India. And when she came home, it was right after that, that she had fallen in her house and had one leg pinned underneath her and eventually lost both legs because of that, because nobody checked on her for about four days. They were wondering where she was. And she's doing great now. She rolls on in and rolls on out and watch her throw an ax. <laughs> She nailed it every single time. Impressive. Impressive is right. Put us to shame. <laughs> but she said, I've got a gift for you. And I'm going to hold on to this gift because it's, I know it's my prophetic part of what needs to happen here. But she brought me this key. Oh, wow. And the key was for an ancient gate in India where St. Thomas first entered into the nation. And I thought, man, I gotta get John and his team here because we need to unlock this even further. Because there, there is something that needs to be unlocked. And then we were in uh, Mount Carmel, Illinois, for our last tribunal meeting. And while we were there, they, one of the members of the team up there was selling some things. And I saw these and I thought, man, I would like that. I just, I like chains and keys and all sorts of stuff because it reminds me of my, what we're all about, okay? It's handcrafted in India. Five links. And I said, Lord, I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to give this to John and to the team. But I thought, and are we going to unlock this or what? And he says, no, I want you to know that is my commitment to you. You are locked in. You are locked in to India, to Malaysia, and to Asia because of what the Lord has planted on you. So, Lord, we just release the full mantle anointing of the fivefold, of the vision, of the strength. The wall will come down. The nations will be healed. Becky, just come up real quick. and just I want all of you to hold on to that for just a moment. And that little fella too. So Lord, we just, we just say we are unlocking India. But we are saying, Lord, you have locked this team to your heart. For the nations. For India, Malaysia, and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, it's a gift-giving day because the minute that I received this gift, hang on. So, I, uh, Cindy Jacobs just had the Deborah's United Conference uh, up at uh, Gloria's. Uh, I usually, uh, I 
do a bunch of different things for them as kind of a tent making thing for myself. And um, one of the things that I do is I drive. And the whole time uh, we were there this year, we did something that we normally don't do, and that was to provide a shuttle service for attendees. I normally just drive the speakers to and from the airport. Um, but this year uh, I had attendees that were in the van and at the very end they were all getting out and she said the Lord told me to give this to you as a thank you for how well you have taken care of us and driving us back and forth and she said this is a unique thing she goes I, I, I'm into prophetic jewelry and I make prophetic jewelry and she said I, I've, I've, this is the last one that I have I've given one to Dutch I've given one to uh, Tim and I've given one to Chuck and she said, and I'm giving this to you. Oh. And the minute I put it on my neck, the Lord says, you're giving this to Tom. Oh. <laughs> so it's a picture of an eagle. Oh. It's, a, it's a, an eagle's face. And then on the back is an American flag, the Statue of Liberty, and this eagle flying. Wow. Oh. And when I got it and I said, Lord, I'm, he said, you're giving that to Tom. And I said, okay, what, what am I supposed to say? And he said that he's in a company of eagles. Yeah. And what God has called him to do yeah. with Chuck and Dutch. And, and we got, I mean, just, just how prophetic that Chuck has one. And he just did the, the tribunal teaching at Glory of Zion. And Dutch has one. And he's running hard with Dutch. And Tim has one. And he's running hard with Tim. The Lord is, is taking what you're doing and increasing it to be within the company of this eagles because what you carry in the release of decrees is some of the very things that we're going to be releasing over Asia. One of the major, major parts of this summit is teaching them how you may not be able to have access inside the parliament, but you can speak and you can decree and you can see a shift come over your nation just by standing in the place of the ecclesia. And, and that message, that tribunal message, you can do it through worship. You can do it through decrees. You can walk your streets. You can stand there and under your breath because words have power. You don't have to do anything to get yourself noticed and arrested and persecuted. But if that comes, so be it, because our king is greater. But to walk without fear, to see from an eagle's perspective, to see from our seated with him in heavenly places perspective, not to decree what we want to see, but to decree what he has decreed, it will come to pass. So, Tom, I want to give this to you. Guy or a jewelry guy, you may just want to. Okay, yeah. all right, then here we go. So, oh my god, Jesus, Jesus. 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 why with the eagles? And yes. This, yes, yes, yes. Not only is this going to speak into your season, yeah, but is it mm -hmm. gonna, this is what you're going to hand off to the next generation, and whoever is to carry the mantle of TXAPN, Marisa. this is their key. They're not through because the Lord said, uh, I know we got a team ready, but that we're just canceling that. Because um, I want an ambassador of Jesus to lay hands on me. So this, any remnant of the sickness is gone from me. Yeah. Yeah. And so anyone else here. Now, I, I'm going to, this is what the Lord said. And I think you'll, you know it because it's decrees. Mm -hmm. This is not where we're going to have 20 people laying hands on you and praying until we get blue in the face. This is making the decrees of healing because I believe the Lord is already releasing. He's been doing it already, that anointing into this house. And that's why I had to give the gifts that I gave to them because it's got to go there. So it's not like, oh, what's well, going to happen when we do the Tim Sheets thing? No, it's, that's just, 
that's going to be like a crescendo. Yeah. And it's going, to, it's going to be massively explosive. So anyone that needs healed, just come up to one of these team members. And just, you don't have to give them your life history. Just let them speak healing over your body. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But let me, before we do that, the Lord bless you and keep you. Yes. Yeah. You know, I say this every Sunday. But it was my reading this morning out of Numbers. And what I, we always forget is the Lord says, say this to the people so that my name yeah. is imparted yeah. to yeah. my people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not just, well, have a blessing. Go enjoy <laughs> lunch. So stand, please. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Yes. Be gracious to you. Yes. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you shalom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.